Now, if you've been following the Premier League at all this season, you've probably noticed Brighton. They have a brand new manager in Roberto De Zerbi, who's playing a really exciting brand of football, which is pushing them right up towards the European places. But one of the other things you may have noticed if you've caught Brighton at all this season is this. Now, this may look like a normal situation on a football field. We've got Brighton here in possession of the ball. Levi Colwell, the centre-back, on the ball. But if we actually zoom in on Colwell, we can see he's doing something very specific. He's actually standing still, not moving at all, and he has his foot on the ball. He has got the studs of his football boot on the ball. He's stopping the ball, and this is a slightly unusual thing to do. But it's not unusual for Brighton, because if we look at the two previous games before this game against Middlesbrough, so here against Everton, again, standing with his studs on the ball, and against Arsenal as well. Here he is with his studs on the ball, standing still, not doing anything, waiting for things to happen. And the big question is, why might he be doing that? And to answer that question, we need to talk a little bit about transition. Now, in footballing terms, transition means any situation where the play is moving quickly from one side of the pitch to the other. But why might that be so important for football? Well, let's have a look at the board here and think about a few different hypothetical situations in which a team could be attacking. So we've got Brighton on the board here. Let's imagine they're playing against a team in a low block. So here's the low block, two banks of four, two players in the forward press, and the general idea here is that they're going to make a block around the goal here, and they're going to say, okay, you can have the ball outside of the block, but we're going to make it really hard for you to do anything inside this block. So we're going to compact space, we're not going to allow any space in behind, and we're going to make it really, really hard for you to break us down and generate good chances. And for a team like Brighton, that's potentially a problem because they don't have those really high-end technical players who will be able to break down this sort of congested block. So for Roberto De Zerbi, he's going to want to avoid this sort of situation and think of other ways to generate chances that are going to be easier for his team to score. What might that be? Well, let's think of a different scenario here. So instead of Brighton attacking against a low block, let's imagine that Brighton are now in the low block. And what that's going to do is flip things around. They're going to allow the opposition to have the ball. They're going to allow them to build up around them and they're going to invite them to try and break them down. But what's important to notice here is that it does have an impact on the shape of the opposition. And what they're doing is actually opening up a huge amount of space between the lines in these sorts of areas here and also this big space here in behind as well. And what that's going to do is create a situation where if Brighton do win over the ball, there's all of this space for their players to transition into. So that's the important aspect of transition. What it allows you to do then is attack the opposition with much more space in behind and between the lines to generate much more dangerous chances. But there is a problem here too, and that is that if you are going to sit deep in a block, then what you're doing is giving the ball to the opposition and you're saying, most of the time you're gonna possess the ball, we're gonna make it hard for you to do anything with the ball, but you're gonna have the ball. And that means that there's gonna be a volume discrepancy in terms of the chances that are being created. The team in possession of the ball are more likely to generate a volume of chances, whereas the team who are sitting deep are gonna generate better chances, but much fewer of those. And so there is a gamble here. You're saying, okay, you attack us and we'll occasionally attack you, but hopefully that will give us an advantage here. And that can be a problem, especially if you're playing in the Premier League, where a lot of the teams do have elite talent, and if you give them a volume of chances, they're probably going to score. So this poses a conundrum, and the solution to that conundrum that Roberto De Zerbi wants is that he wants the best of both worlds. So what is the best of both worlds here for De Zerbi? Well, he wants to be able to benefit from these sorts of transitional moments where his team can get better chances because there's more space to attack. But at the same time, he doesn't just want to give possession to the opposition and allow them to dictate the play. And this gives us the context within which we can answer the question, why are De Zerbi's defenders standing on the ball? So let's have a think about why that might be the case. So on the board here, we've got Levi Colwell, who we've seen likes to stand on the ball. Let's have a think about what impact that this is having on the game itself. So Colwell is standing here with his feet on the ball, and what he is doing here is he is trying to bait a press. He's trying to look provocative so that the opposition think, this guy's standing with the ball, if I press him, maybe we can win it, turn it over. And the idea here is that the whole team then will press up behind him, and what we're doing then is generating this situation where transitions are available. We've talked about space in behind and the space in between the lines. He is standing on the ball because he wants to generate these sorts of conditions into which a team can transition really well. But the more enlightened among you here will be recognizing that it's not quite so simple as just being able to bait a press forward because it's not just the case that Brighton have generated a lot of space in behind, they've actually reduced a lot of the space around the ball. And so this is the conundrum. How do you then get from this sort of situation into benefiting from that transitional moment? And as we saw, there is one quite simple solution to this problem. That is that Colwell could just hit the ball into space and then have his teammates run into that space. But as we said, De Zerbi wants to retain possession. He doesn't just want to give the ball back in this situation. 
This is going to generate transitional moments, but they're not really efficient transitional moments. He wants to generate transitional moments that actually benefit him. So rather than having his players trigger the transitions from deeper areas, Roberto De Zerbi wants to do something slightly different. He wants them to progress the ball into this area here, the promised land of De Zerbiism. And from here then, you can generate much more efficient and dangerous transitional moments for a couple of reasons. One of them is that if you have possession of the ball, it's much easier to make these sorts of passes into teammates. And on top of this, what you can do is generate even more space by having your strikers dropping in pulling the centre backs with them and again just increasing the amount of space that these wide players then can run into. And so what De Zerbi is trying to do then is rather than playing traditional transitional play, so playing from deep into space, is he's generating what we like to call artificial transitions. So you're possessing the ball but in such a way as to generate the conditions to transition in better ways. That's what De Zerbiism is all about. The question is then how do you get the ball from here to here under pressure because let's not forget that you're baiting the press, you're trying to get the opposition to move towards the ball. Now this is where build-up play becomes so important for De Zerbi because the way that the ball is going to move between here is by using patterns of play that can allow Brighton to move the ball into this area as we called it, the promised land of De Zerbiism under the possession of the two central midfielders. So let's think of a couple of ways of doing that. So I've set up a 4-4-2 situation on the board here because this is the way that Middlesbrough played against Brighton in the FA Cup last week. Now obviously the easiest way to get the ball to these two centre midfielders from the back is to play the ball directly to them. But Michael Carrick, the Middlesbrough coach, is a smart guy. He knows that's how De Zerbi wants his team building up. And so what he did was he stuck two players in the forward press, just blocking off those passes. So this creates a problem that Brighton then have to solve. Now, the best way to solve that problem is to bait the press. So stand on the ball, draw this player towards you. And in doing so, what you've done then is generate a dismarking here. So Pascal Gross was being marked, the player pushed forward, now he's not marked. And so what you'll often see in these situations is that Brighton will play the quick pass across the pitch to the other centre back and that then opens this angle into Pascal Gross's feet. You can now play that pass and now you're in that area where you want to be, you can now spring those transitional movements. But again, Michael Carrick is a smart guy and so rather than allowing his players to push aggressively onto the centre backs, he sat them deep on the pivots. So this poses another problem for De Zerbi's team to solve and the way that they're going to solve this is by trying to generate these dismarking moments, getting their players into space so they can then move the ball into the area that they want to move it into. And this produces what I like to call the De Zerbian S. This is something that we'll see a lot in Brighton games in the rest of the season. Let me explain what I mean by that. Now let's imagine that Colwell plays the ball to Lewis Dunk here and what we're going to see in these situations often is the far-sided pivot player here in the central midfield making the space here to lose his man, okay? So what he's going to do is he's going to drop in here, now in front of the player who's marking him, and this opens up a pass from Lewis Dunk into his feet. Now, because Lewis Dunk is baiting this player forward, again, we've generated a dismarking moment. So this player is pushed forward and you're able to bypass them. Caicedo is now in space. So what you'll often see in these situations then is a first time pass between the two pivot players. So Dunk plays the pass, Gross plays the pass and then Caicedo has the ball in space in this promised land of De Zerbiism. Now all this may sound a little bit theoretical so the best way of explaining it is to just show you how it happens in practice. So on the board in front of me I've got a few screenshots. This is from the Middlesbrough game. Here's the two forward players in the press that we talked about. They're marking the central midfielders and they're stopping this easy pass from the centre back into the centre midfielder. So we have this problem. How do you dismark one of these players, move them into space so that they can move the ball into this area, the promised land of De Zerbiism. You can see why that might be so enticing. If you can get the ball under control in that area, you're then going to be able to attack in different ways. So let's see what plays out. So we've already talked about how Pascal Gross, he's the far-sided pivot player here, is going to drop into this space here. That's going to open up the pass from the centre back into his feet and he's going to play a first time pass to uh, Caicedo here and then Caicedo can move into this area here. So let's see how it plays out. You can see the ball played into Pascal Gross, first time pass to Caicedo and you can see now that this space just opens up entirely and now he's in this sort of situation with the ball under control where he's got the option of playing into the two strikers here or the option of playing into the wide player here. This is Kaoru Matoma. And again, interesting to note that both of the strikers have abandoned the final line here. This is the last line of defense. They've dropped in. You can see the center back here is worried about 
who he should be marking. So he's pushing forward naturally. And again, that is generating a huge amount of space in behind that Brighton can attack. So from Levi Colwell having the ball under possession under his studs, Brighton are then able to move the ball through the field into this area and then generate these artificial transitions that make them really dangerous. The important thing to remember is that De Zerbi does want to retain possession of the ball. He does want to dictate play. They are going to try and move the ball into this area and then transition from there. But the important thing is, is that if there's a dangerous situation that emerges, so if this pass into Pascal Gross comes in and the player tracks him well, the situation that will happen is rather than playing a more aggressive pass, you might see Pascal Gross passing it back to the other side to retain possession here. So Brighton are going to possess the ball at the back, try and generate these moments where they can get into this area and transition from there. That is the heart of De Zerbi's football. Now, given that Brian are playing really well this season, the likelihood is you're going to catch some of their games this season. So keep an eye out for their defenders putting their feet on the ball. And when you see that happening, just remember why they're doing that. They're wanting to bait the press, generate space and have these artificial transitions. And as things stand, it's a really good way of attacking and it could even get them into European spots. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalised experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.